Next up, we have um, some cables. Yeah, you actually wanted us to carry some USB extension cables because you were like, this thing isn't far enough away because mm -hmm. you have a USB thing over here and you yeah. want it over there. So we have two lengths of, it's really very plain. It's a USB extension cable, but like when you need one, you really want one. I like how slim and, and straightforward these are. Um, they're good quality. They have all the pins connected through both ways. So, you know, you can reverse it. One meter and two meter. Yeah. Very heavy. All right, next up. Next up, we have a 18-pin uh, FPC cable. Um, I got these because we're actually going to be doing some more stuff with iSpy, which is why the code is iSpy. Um, so these cables would be useful for our boards that are coming out. Again, there's a silicon and TFT shortage. So the cables came before uh, the rest of the parts did. Yeah. Um, but I can just show on the overhead. Um, this is actually using a DF robot board because they have a uh, connector that I'm, I'm dubbing iSpy. I don't know if they have a name for, for their connector. It's a feather shaped board, it looks it's like. It's a very feather shaped mm. board, but it's, it's not quite feather. And mm. uh, iSpy is not quite compatible with their thing either. But this is, um, uh, you know, iSpy is, is this uh, SPI connector that we're going to put on our TFT displays. And then when you have a board that has the same uh, FPC connector, you can uh, match them up. And now you have a. Uh, you know, remotely connectable display without all that wiring that normally you have to do with all the header pins. And so we have this in both 100 millimeter and 200 millimeter um, flex cable, and, they, and they're symmetric, so it's kind of nice you can use it either way. Okay. Um, and then next up, uh, the star of the show, besides you, Lady Ada, and all of Adafruit team, the community, the customers, everyone in the chat tonight is. Yay, AT Tiny 817 Breakout. Okay, so this is a kind of an interest. It's a three-in-one board, really. So first up, it's a uh, development platform for the AT Tiny 817. Uh, it says 8x7 because one day I might have a different chip, but it's the 817 on there right now, which is the kind of the second or third gen AVR chips from Microchip. So you know, people know the um, at Mega 328. You know, famous with the at Mega 8, um, you know, the original chip, one of the original chips, or um, the AT Tiny 85. Well, you know, there was a, a kind of a, a revision to that silicon um, to come up with the like a teeny AVR, mega AVR series. I don't know exactly the, the name of them, but it's kind of a, a redo. A lot of it is um, very compatible, but they've added some more um, hardware functionality, like, for example, uh, capacitive touch natively um, and uh, single wire debug and um, some, some good peripherals. I like I, the peripherals are a little bit more. Uh, flexible as well, um, more pin muxing capabilities for all the all the peripherals. Like this has two I squared C ports, right? Which normally you would not get on a 50 cent part. Um, but more importantly, you know, the originally we were using the SAMD09 for a lot of our seesaw and and Stemma QT boards. SAMD09 is getting quite hard to get, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a lot of them for the next year. And so I thought. Let's revise our boards instead of using the three volt SAMD09 Cortex M0. The AT Tiny 817 is, is a quite powerful board. It's 20 megahertz. It's got 8K of flash, I think a half K of RAM, a little bit of EEPROM. EEPROM is quite nice. Um, and it runs from 3 or 5 volt, which is kind of sweet. It's a lot of, bunch of peripherals. It's very inexpensive. Um, so this is a dev board to help me use that chip. Another nice thing, lots of analog digital converter pins, a lot of PWM pins, more than the SAMD. The SAMD, I think, only had four analog digital inputs, um, I think, muxed into the ADC, and this one has like nine. Uh, and it's got a lot of PWMs too. So it's got like a lot more flexibility, I think, on the pinout. Um, second, it is a Seesaw development board. So we're gonna sh we're shipping this with Seesaw, which is our I squared C to whatever protocol. So you can do PWM and analog inputs. It doesn't have a DAC. Um, it does have a NeoPixel driver, which I'll show the demo for. Like I said, PWM output, you can, access the EEPROM, you can change the I2C address. Um, but what it's really useful for is, you know, a lot of times you're like, I want to connect like a rotary encoder to I2C, or I want to connect a rotary encoder to something, and that's something that requires, rotary encoder or NeoPixels requires timing specific data that you really want to sub-processor it out. And so this is our kind of our, our sub-processor, co-processor helper that runs over I2C. And uh, in addition, it's also got uh, STEMI QT uh, connectors on each end. So you can use it as an I2C breakout. You can use it if you want. Basically, a, a, a chip that can control a lot of GPIO and, and NeoPixels and PWMs, um, this board will do the trick. So 
Let's do a demo. Let's do a demo. This is real. So here I've got it connected up to a, a Cutie Pie board, or one of our uh, easy to use because it's got a uh, stomach QT connector. So it's I squared C power ground yeah. did a clock and it's going to uh, that board. And this is actually, you know, again, this is right out of the box. This is the firmware that comes with it. Um, you can wire it up to NeoPixels on any pin. It can control up to 60 NeoPixels. And then over here, this is sending I squared C commands to here to drive the NeoPixels. So the Cutie Pi obviously could drive NeoPixels on, on its own, but what if this was a Raspberry Pi, or it can be a computer, and you have a, um, a USB to I squared C adapter, or it can be uh, you know a onion Pi or whatever, something that can't drive NeoPixels or, or doesn't want to, uh, you want to offload all that bit banging stuff to a coprocessor. This board's a couple bucks and takes commands of I squared C and does all that work for you. It can also do rotary encoders and PWM and analog inputs. So all these things that are hard for embedded Linux or computer or some microcontrollers to do, um, you can now uh, offload it. So very similar to our SAMD09 board, but now with the ATtiny 817. Um, and we'll probably also do an 8x6 board as well. Uh, the 817 is quite nice because not only does it have all these GPIO uh, and one wire program debug uh, using UPDI, but um, it also has an internal oscillator so you can change the speed. Um, again, it can do three or five volts, unlike the SAMD09. Um, and it has hardware multiply, so I have some ideas for audio input as well. Okay, and that is this week's new products.